clean the mold on its side, I now have access to the bolts on the bottom of the board and I am going to attempt to remove the board so that I can separate the mold. Just keep prying until we get a little hair, hairline fracture. See the little hairline fracture? That's what we want. It's fracturing all along that edge there. I got a couple clay wedges up in here. Little hairline fracture. That's what we want. In there. See the fracture is getting a little larger. Separating this rocket. What we're doing is we're getting air in there. So we want a little bit of air. to the other side. I'm 
A steady, constant pressure, slow pressure. Take a bigger pry bar. Slow pressure. Inevitably, even pressure. Or the whole thing will be evenly. Inevitably, one side is going to be harder than the other to get out. So it looks like the back is going to peel off easier than the front. That is the front. Remove the clay as best you can. Try not to damage the um, walls of the mold by prying on the sides of the mold. If you have to, like I'm doing, remove it by sections, little by little. It eventually will all pop out quite easily up in the end. <clears throat> I clean the mold, wash the mold out. I neglected to film uh, coating the mold with green soap. Do two coats of green soap. Then blow it out with your air hose and make sure there's no pools of soap and no bubbles before you assemble your mold. Assemble the halves. If they have good keys, the halves will register automatically and they'll fit together nice and tight. I like to use inexpensive uh, straps to tighten the mold down. This first coat is going to go on rather thin. And it's used to seal up in case there's any holes in the mold or leaks. This will seal the leaks. So you don't want to lock the plaster on your first go around. You can stir the plaster. Make sure there's no bubbles in it. There's always going to be bubbles, but what we do is we roll the plaster around, the mold around on the floor, and we wash the bubbles out. Look inside, inspect it. Roll it 
little slower. Now I'm going to mix up a little more plaster this time. Three quarts of water, six quarts of plaster. I pre measured the plaster. Determined that this is the back side, and so what we got to do is break out the back side first. Now, I can see from the rust, this is the rust shows me where the irons are. So, first thing to do is chisel down to the irons and remove the irons. And that way we won't go into we won't go into the blue. We're going to chisel down to the blue and then remove the blue coat very gently. Hey, I'm following along the um, <clears throat> the irons, not careful not to go below the irons and then just gently pulling them up and removing the irons. Being very cautious, we will now start to remove the flanges. You want to be very careful around the areas where the ears are so you don't break the ear off with the flange. But if you break the flange off, then you can work inward and everything releases in a natural sequence. And just using a hammer and chisel, going gently. What you want to do is unlock the plaster. The plaster is locked up along the edges and as you free up the edges along the flange then the rest of the plaster will fall away quite naturally. So you see that I'm, I'm releasing the flange along the flange being very careful not to go into the, the plaster casting. All you have to do is start to get a little crack. You don't have to drive it down all the way like you do working in stone. You just start the crack and let the crack just encourage it to crack. So you just start and crack and release. Start, crack and release. And go down the blue and just brush it off.
Okay, you can see a few places where I drove in with the chisel rather aggressively. Here and here, those are easy little patches. Broke off the little thing on the fleur de lis. What do you call it? Fleur de lis. Got a couple chisels. Those are easily remedied. Now the blue, I can just take a little dental pick and pull the blue out of these little deep areas. Pull the blue out of the ears. Add a little white there. Over the years I've seen many artists dismayed when their works from clay <clears throat> went into bronze. Too often they witnessed their work with flaws and present the dismay to the foundry saying that's not my work. There is nothing like viewing the white of the plaster to see your flaws. Every single flaw is revealed in the white of the plaster. Whether you turn your sculpture into bronze or stone, this is a highly recommended extra necessary stage if you want perfection in your work.